TikTok. TikTok. That's me waiting on The Rock to respond to our call-outs to this hashtag Delco challenge. Are you kidding me? What are you waiting on? Jumanji 3 to start filming? Come on! There's a little girl in media who wants to meet you, and you don't got the time for that? Well, Hollywood Holbrook does, and that's why we're bringing you this episode, and we're going to tell you about it. Because if you smell what Marcus Hook is cooking... Hello. I feel, I feel like every show is a wrestling promo for you anymore. My life is a wrestling <laughs> promo. <laughs> you've been it waiting, really is. You've been waiting for this show for, oh, like, just to do, like, a wrestling-based show for a very long time. Can you just be honest with me? I you? saw an article that said the sentence, and I tell you my mental thought. Delaware County, ooh, interested. Okay. Girl with cancer, sad, but I want to help. Okay. Wants to meet Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And I've never felt more at peace in my life of just like, if there's ever been a nexus in my life coming together, this is it. I have to admit, it's been pretty, it's been like, uh, it's definitely a challenge, what we're trying to do here. But it's, A hashtag Delco challenge. Yes, but uh, so far a lot of people have been coming out of the woodwork. Uh, Not enough! But we need more. It's absolutely correct, we need more. Uh, real simple, guys. All you have to do, create a wrestling promo real quick. Minute, tops, two minutes, whatever you want to do. Get all excited. Get into it. Do a full Piper's Pit for all I care. Yeah, I don't care. But hashtag Delco Challenge. And you got to call the rock out. Tell them to come see Lily Chung. And then also call out three other people that you want them to do the same thing. Not too unlike the Ice Bucket it's Challenge. the Ice Bucket Challenge, except you don't have to get wet. No. But me. you have to get hype. Yes. Uh, and the videos that we put out so far have been hugely successful. They're getting better by the by the cut. Uh, Oldberg made his debut. Oldberg, the Delco Eagle. Yeah, I like. I, I, just because we had the Eagle hat, is that working? Yeah, I needed to be something. You walked into myself. the room and said, "Eagle." All our, right, our, don't you yep. already play a character called Delco? Genius? I was going to say, like, of all people, yeah, in but this I room, didn't have my costume and all this stuff, so I was like, "Let's do something other than Delco Jesus. Let's expand. Let's think outside the box." Yeah. And, so, then, and then Hollywood Holbrook also I, having the character Double H. Double H. Double H. You know, The Rock has lost to Triple H before, and he you know, he should get down here and uh, try to beat Double H. Yeah, because he may not even make a single H if he keeps this up the way he's been dodging it. You know, I, I know fear when I see it. <laughs> smell it? Can you smell it, fear? Uh, yeah. And then, of course, uh, Holbrook puts out this great promo, uh, which we're going to talk about in a second. Uh, but we're going to have right now... On the line, we are going to be talking to uh, Lily Chung's mom, Ashley Chung. Miss Chung? Yes, hi uh, there. Hi, you're live on the air on Delco Live. I'm Big Al, uh, Delco Jesus, and Hollywood Holbrook. Uh, thank you for taking your time. I know life's really busy and hectic right now, so thank you for taking your time to call in. Absolutely not a problem. So we saw an article on NBC10, and it was about your daughter and her struggle. And what the uh, what the goal was, and it was to get Dwayne <laughs> the Rock Johnson uh, to come down to Delco or the uh, remote area around here, and also to get your their heads waxed. They together. want to get the heads waxed together, which I think is amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's my yeah. favorite part. Oh, yes. I will easily shave my head to 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 wax on, uh, wax off. That's our next promo. Yeah, the wax on, wax off challenge. Yeah. <laughs> so your your name's Ashley, correct? That's correct. Do you spell it L E Y or L E I G H? L E I G H. Oh, that's the most Delco thing I've ever heard. Where are you from? <laughs> uh, I'm actually originally from Pittsburgh. Oh, I'm sorry about your <laughs> hockey team and just being a bunch of terrible hockey players. Um, <laughs> what brings you to Delaware County? My husband and I actually met at Penn State working at Cafe 210 West. Okay. And he was from Philadelphia, I was from Pittsburgh. He was an only child. I was one of seven, so oh. his mom kind of won out on that one and yeah, ended up yeah. back in Delco. <laughs> there you go. And you chose media. That's a good choice. Yeah, it's a great area. We've been really happy here. That's a sentence a lot of people don't say around here. <laughs> <laughs> I work in media. It's very nice, but it's only because I used to work in Camden. Do you know what Camden is? I do. We it's go to the concerts there in the yeah. summer and take the kids to the aquarium. <laughs> yeah, those are the two nice things in Camden. I was going to say, do they still have the aquarium? Yeah, I used to work there. I know the concerts were still there, but I wasn't sure about the aquarium. Over the summer, a big wind gust hit it. I worked at the building next to it, and it took the roof off of the shark exhibit. So we were really close oh, to no. a real-life Sharknado. Oh, wow. Oh, I was watching with my <laughs> camera ready. 
<laughs> so, Ashley, Miss Chung. Yes. Penn State graduate. Correct. What'd you go for? I studied marketing and international business oh. with a minor in Italian and international studies. Wow. Wow. That's the most media so, thing I've ever heard. Not that it's a really big feat. <laughs> she's a lot smarter than us. And I like because she does Italian, so that's cool. Too. I literally can't even like say a phrase in Italian to try to sound smart right now. I can, but it's not allowed to be said. Akabuchi. Akabuchi. Yeah. Um, so uh, let us uh, tell us about uh, your recent um, uh, a dilemma. Yeah. So bigger than a dilemma. Yeah. Um, probably the biggest thing we've ever gone through in our lives. Mm. Our oldest daughter, who is 10 years old, Lily Chung, she was diagnosed with neuroblastoma in December. And it was very unexpected to say the least. She had been having some pain in her hip and her joints and her bones. And to be frank, I mean, you guys, I'm sure understand this. Growing up where we live, I assumed she had Lyme's disease. Oh, yeah. So, sure. I, yeah, I took her to the doctors, and the test came back negative. And as a mom, I was like, you're wrong. They just don't understand how Lyme's disease works. So I took her back to the doctors, and I said, no, it's just growing pains. I said, you're wrong. You still don't understand how Lyme's disease works. So I took her back to the doctors, to the emergency room at CHOP, actually, right before Thanksgiving. And the Lyme's test came back positive. And, you know, you have one of those mom moments where, like, I told you, she has Lyme's disease, and they started her on antibiotics. And, unfortunately, the antibiotics did not have the impact that we had hoped. So she was still experiencing pain. And we had a follow-up appointment with the rheumatologist in September. And he was actually awesome. He was amazing. He was our angel. He saw us for about 10 minutes and told us that he thought we needed to see oncology which was a complete shock. It was a Friday morning. Wow. I had planned to go back into work Friday afternoon. And obviously those things changed very, very quickly. So we went from a standard kind of routine rheumatology visit on a Friday morning to her having a bone marrow aspiration and biopsies the following Monday. Was that at and University of Penn? CHOP? Pardon? Was Pardon me? At, was that at CHOP? Yeah, everything was at CHOP. So the rheumatologist was at CHOP. Um, he referred us quickly to an oncologist at CHOP, and then the uh, biopsy was at CHOP as well the following Monday. Yeah, CHOP's damn good. They are the best. So I have spoken to a number of people throughout the medical field, St. Jude, Johns Hopkins, you know, kind of leaders all over the country yeah, within yeah. this space. And for neuroblastoma, everybody says that we are exactly where we should be. Yeah. So yeah. that's amazing, and we are incredibly fortunate to be as close as we are to CHOP. And kudos to you because, I mean, a lot of times when – you know, doctors just say, yeah, it's Lyme's disease or it's growing pains. It's it's very easy to, to take that diagnosis and run with it uh, just because, you know, it's what you're hoping it is, something simple. Uh, but, you know, kudos to you for, you know, sticking to your guns because sometimes these things can go too long and too far uh, before somebody actually can figure this out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, we were really fortunate. We knew our kid, too, and this is a kid who – if you met her, um, she's incredibly fierce. And when she takes on her sports specifically, you know, there's nothing really stopping her. And this was a kid that was kind of tapping out mid quarter, you know, mid half in a soccer game and a basketball game, just not able to finish the game, which was so contradictory to her personality and really signifying how much pain she was actually in. So that was a big flag for us just that, you know, but for parents everywhere, you know, your kids better than anybody else. Sure. And when you start to see those types of changes, those are, those are significant signals about what's happening that maybe nobody else is picking up on. Yeah. And uh, kudos to you and your husband and everyone else involved as well, because that interview uh, on NBC 10, uh, <laughs> her interview like alone was more eloquent than almost everyone I know my age. <laughs> Yes. The point where I'm like, they yeah. said ten, like that's that's not the ten year old, right? No. That's literally like just sound like just the vocabulary and like the presence was just like wow. Yeah, we've been incredibly impressed by her throughout this entire process. You know, the one thing that a lot of people have said to us is that the support from the community, the support from people within media and within her sports and within the school district and across the country really must be a testament to the relationships that my husband and I have built over the years and the reality is, is that that's part of it, mm. but at the end of the day, it's really about the person that she is and the way that she shows up every single day. We've had teammates that have known her for a year show up and say that, you know, their parents expected the way that she shows up on the field to carry over off the field, which is a little bit fierce, a little bit aggressive, 
a little bit like I'm going to win no matter what the cost mm-hmm. is. And they were so impressed and surprised that she was the kid that was calling out the quiet kids and including them in the group and bringing them into the team. So it's really a testament to who she is and her, her brief 10 years of life so far on this planet and the way that she shows up every day, which is very cool. Yeah, During the interview, Holbrook was talking about, uh, she mentioned she wasn't upset about the diagnosis. She was upset <laughs> about missing uh, a ski trip, uh, yeah. which is, you know, like you said, it, it, it it just goes to show you how tough she is. And what, you know, she's, you know, a lot of people get a diagnosis even close to this. It's just, you know, what was me and everything, you know, but she just looks like, eh, you know, just a, just skip it, just sort of rocking the palm. We'll move on with it. And everything's great. You know, so she, she has a great, um, upbeat personality about it. looks like, and tell us like what, what sports does she, does she do? Uh, that you say she's all fierce at. I would like to know what she does is, is wrestling. One of them being, <laughs> one of her favorites. No, so uh, um, funny enough, she does not wrestle. I'm sure she would love to. Her primary sports are actually soccer and lacrosse. She plays basketball in the winter just because they kind of port over her soccer team into a basketball team. It's more okay. entertainment value than anything else um, for all of the parents. But her primary sports are soccer and lacrosse. She talks about things like wrestling. Her brother played football this year. She was desperate to play football. (laughs) Basically, any sport that she can get her hands on, anything that requires speed and agility and a little bit of a feistiness, she's in for. So so the most interesting part about this is that there's a 10-year-old whose idol is (laughs) Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Which isn't isn't like a newer wrestler. And legitimately, my hero at 11 years old was Dwayne The Rock Johnson. (laughs) Yeah, and yeah. I'm 33, and it's just yep. like, has he transcended? He also hasn't wrestled in a while. Yeah, and the interviews that she's talking about loving, like those were those were years ago. Is, yeah. is she just like binging on the network right now or something? Yeah, so it's actually a fantastic story, and and nobody has kind of picked it up at this point, even though she's mentioned it a few times. She, I, I'll pause and say that I mentioned earlier, I'm one of seven children, and I'm the second oldest. So my younger brothers right now are like living into this moment. Like it sounds like you all are yeah, yeah. so much because for them, they're like, what? He's our idol, you know, and they're wearing his gear from Dick's Sporting Goods. And, yeah. you know, they're, they're so stoked about this as well. But the interesting thing is that it came up because there was a movie that she watched as a child. I think it was called Santa Paws or something along those lines. And she was actually looking up one of the female actresses that was in this movie. Mm-hmm. And she had played in a movie with Dwayne Johnson. So she watched that movie and fell in love with him as an actor. And from there, you know the way that the algorithm works in Comcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She would search Dwayne Johnson and she would find everything that The Rock was in. And she started literally binging all of his movies. And by the time she got through all his movies that were quote unquote appropriate for her at that age, and she moved on to watching WWE. And we would walk into the living room and find her laying on the couch watching old clips, watching new clips. We most recently watched Wrestling with Family, um, yes. and she loved the scene where the dad didn't believe that it was Dwayne Johnson on the other end of the phone, yeah. Yeah. screaming at him repeatedly, trying to convince him, and she was just completely tickled by it. So it's been really cool, and it's funny. I mean, it's been years since this started, and when it initially started, I, looked her, I remember looking at her and saying, really, Dwayne Johnson is your favorite actor? She's like, yeah, I love him. I'll watch anything he's in. Hey, he was the uh, highest grossing actor of 2019. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she, she's been in on it for a long time and it was, it was cool to see too, that an actor that she loved so much as we started this experience, which is obviously going to be the biggest fight of her life. She found that immediate connection with like, if I'm going to be bald, I'm going to emulate someone who I think is such a positive role model. She's heard stories about him. She follows him on Instagram through my account. Um, and it was cool to see her kind of make that association that, like, this is someone that I've looked up to for a very long time, and now I want to do something with him because I'm kind of stepping into a little bit of my own metamorphosis as things are about to change for me over the next year and a half. Yeah, and like you said, like, it's it's kind of amusing to us because we're, we knew Rock as the wrestler who then turned into the, the actor, and she's getting it in, in the other way. Which in the is, opposite it, direction. You know, yeah. it, which is pretty cool. And it, and the funny thing is, like, if I was saying, like, somebody famous and bald, I don't know if The Rock would be the first person that <laughs> jumped in my mind. So, yeah, it's pretty cool that she made the connection. But I like yeah. the fact that during her interview, she said she doesn't really want to just meet The Rock. She wants to meet The Rock, and she wants to get her, her head waxed together. Because tell her, I'd sit right next to her. I'd be the third person in the row that I would love. <laughs> uh, I would love to have my head just 
wax right with her, with The Rock as well. And you know The Rock would do it, too. Yeah, like, yeah, he, he, like, he literally he seems like the it. coolest person like on yeah. the planet. Yeah, absolutely. I had absolutely. to unfollow him on Instagram because you said you, you follow him, right? Yeah, we follow him. So he would frequently send out uh, posts at like 4 a.m. of him at the gym, just like just lifting like a thousand pounds, going, like, <laughs> yeah, Why aren't you at the gym morning. yet? I'll be like, I'll tell you again, Rock, because I'm still drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I was actually, I was joking with someone recently between Lizzo and The Rock. I think for a 10 year old girl, Lily's far too in tune with what tequila now is as an adult beverage. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, because he's currently on his tour promoting his new tequila. So yeah, uh, it's kind Wait, of is funny. That the rock's doing? He's got a tequila. Yeah, he's got. A... Oh, challenge to drink contest. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's what we're doing. Dude, he don't drink it. He just sells it, pal. That's not how yeah, it works. He's a smart man. He doesn't, you know. So I was gonna say, like, you know, you said you're not letting her watch uh, age appropriate movies when you're kind yeah. of going back to the the wrestling where you like sitting here kind of like getting a little nervous around the wrestling clips because I I know that wasn't. I mean. 10 years old I was starting to watch it but you know maybe not age appropriate nowadays yeah it's kind of funny I mean at this point we are um well obviously in the last couple of weeks what's age appropriate has kind of gone out the window sure sure <laughs> we're like what's life appropriate now okay let's see yeah. um so it's interesting we just told her this weekend that uh we go back to the hospital tomorrow morning for her second round of chemotherapy and she has five days in the hospital and she's never seen any of the Fast and Furious movies and my husband may be a little bit obsessed with the entire franchise. So um, we told her that now those are all age appropriate. And she can start from the beginning and pick up, I think, in Fast and Furious 5 is where the rocks introduced. And she can just keep on going through them. So she's got her work cut out for her the next few days. Can she cut a video of calling Noroblastoma a Rudy Poo candy ass? <laughs> Um, she could. I don't know if she'll get through it without giggling, but we could give it a go. We we did the same thing, so we giggled the whole time too. So, so it's okay. I'm she not gonna also lie. refuses to say ass, so she'll probably call it a candy donkey. Even which is every time better. someone that's tells her that amazing. she's a badass, that's, I will she get says that she's a bad donkey. So. That that that's amazing. Like if I gave my my, I have a ten year old, and if I gave him the chance to say the word ass, he'd be all over it. So you're a much better parent than I am. Yeah, you're a much better parent than all of us because yeah. my kids would love to say that word. Yeah. So this Delco <laughs> challenge that we're uh, throwing out there. Yeah. We we do things like this a lot, and the fact that this one got to involve wrestling is just a straight up bonus for us. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna lie, we don't really know how to get to the Rock, but uh, we can try. I love it. Have I you, love it. Have so you we, heard from anyone, like, any inside information of, like, anything that we can do? No, I haven't heard of okay. any inside information of anything that can be done. I will say that yesterday we had not heard about the Delco Challenge yet as of yesterday morning. And last night someone messaged my husband and mentioned that we had to watch this video. And it was probably the most relaxing hour that we'd had in a very long time. We searched the hashtag Delco challenge on Facebook and on Instagram watched all the videos, all the promos that had been cut over the past few days and just truly enjoyed ourselves. And we're again, just so proud of the community that we live in and so thrilled to be, to see people kind of picking up on this goal for Lily and this wish of Lily's, which was very cool. And I can tell you that there's only like a handful of videos, maybe 10 or whatever right now, but the, the knowledge and support of it is so much deeper that there's just a lot of scaredy cats that don't want to cut it. But they'll flag me down the street and be like, yo, that Delco challenge, that's brilliant, man. I just saw this person. I saw this person's. Yeah, but, they'll throw a bunch yeah. of ice water on themselves, but you ask them to pretend to be a wrestler for 30 <laughs> seconds, you might as well, you know. Meanwhile, I put 10 beers in them. They'll pretend to be any wrestler you want them to be. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I'm Oldberg, if you're just one. <laughs> and, then, and then, of course, he's Hollywood. And then the Delco Eagle is Delco Jesus. So those are three of the 10 ish videos that are out there right now. Oh, fantastic. Then I watched all three of you last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and my son, my son Michael, was the Heartbreak Kid. He was. Oh, my gosh. I loved it. That was perfect. Yeah. So we're doing what we can. We've gotten it in on the desks of. Certain people, because you got to remember, in that industry, the Rock's family runs deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, there there's people in in the know that are aware of it, and you know, can see what they can do. Yeah, we have a, we've had a few people kind of reach out and say, "Listen, I have a connection here. I have a connection there. I sent the yeah, videos. The I sent this. I'm not promising anything." In which we will continue to say, "We're not going to promise anything, but we're going yeah. we're going to do our damnedest." Because one thing here is we're very stub. You know, we might not be smart. We may not be good looking. But we are very stubborn, <laughs> and we will get, you know, we will try our best to do what we can do in this situation. 
Yeah, that's awesome. I if, love it. And we you, really appreciate it. If you can find any of my exes or any of my friends, I don't even know why they're still friends anymore. Um, they will tell you that I am one of the most annoying people of all time, and that <laughs> I only get my way by annoying people. But I love um, it. if you recall, I mean, uh, the Rock's cousin is Roman Reigns, and he had a little bit of a, a, a battle with cancer recently as well. Yes. So. Okay. I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, I guess it was last year. So we, um, I don't know, there's there's things being sent around and we'll stick with it and we'll do everything we can. Mm -hmm. And if not, we'll get more and more ridiculous until until it works. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we really appreciate it. And thank you guys for helping to kind of try and continue to push this and uh, keep it in front of the... Keep it in front of the spotlights until it happens. It's oh awesome. yeah, we you made a, we made a holiday, so like we 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 can get things done. I love it. Uh, have great. you heard of Delco Day? It's the greatest day of the year. <laughs> I've never heard of it. June, when is Delco Day? It's June tenth, six one zero, like our area codes out here. Well, fantastic. Yeah, we'd throw a big party at Marty McGee's every year it's for the Headstrong Foundation. Oh, that's nice. We're actually going to the Wings game on January thirty first with the Headstrong Foundation. There we go. I'll, I'll actually be there. At the Wings game myself. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So we'll get to meet in person. I love that. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, and do you want to do, do us a favor? Please keep us up to date as much as you can on how she's feeling and how she's doing. As we told you uh, off the air, we do have uh, a bit of a surprise, at least a start for her to give her something. To, you know, can't get the rock here just yet, but, you know, we have something in, in, the, in the works to give her the feel of the rock at least. I love it. That sounds great. She'll be thrilled. All right. So we'll 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 contact you down the line once she gets you know give us time like when she gets out of the hospital after this treatment and everything kind of calms down. You know, you contact us and we'll take care of everything on our end for you. That sounds great, guys. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for taking your time tonight. No problem. Have a great evening. See you. you too, Ashley. Thank you.